It's rare that you can be inspired to make a video by pure anger alone, but here we are. If somehow you managed to miss this debacle, let me fill you in. Dead Cells released earlier this month and it's pretty good apparently, but that's not why we're here. You see, Boomstick Gaming wrote a well thought out and positive review for the game on the 24th of July, and on the 6th of August, Gaming Colossus IGN expressed similar feeling towards the game. Very similar, in fact. Actually, not to mince words, it was out and out plagiarised. At this point, I could take you through the similarities between the videos and let you come to your own conclusion, but who better to do so than the injured party themselves? So here you go. Through it and I'll show you what I mean. First off, this is uh, the Boomstick Gaming, that's myself. Let's go ahead and start. Dead Cells takes the progression of a Metroidvania and integrates it into this procedurally generated action roguelite that has you slowly chipping away at its steep difficulty. It takes the progression system of a Metroidvania and transforms it into a procedurally generated action roguelite. Okay. Please. All right. Stellar writing, Philip. Dead Cells only falters slightly with some repetition setting in, especially on the early areas and during longer play sessions. Dead Cells does falter slightly with some repetition, but it's only felt in its earlier areas and during the extended play sessions. The Aside from the phrases that have been lifted verbatim, there are a few that are so eerily similar that simple coincidence is a pretty long shot too. Perhaps most damning, there's no editing trickery here from Boomstick, and things are said in perfect order, so not only was the review totally replicated, the writer couldn't even muster the effort to mix up the structure. Inevitably, the video was blown up over the last week, and has led to the firing of the video's writer, Philip Mewson. While many have been quick to attack IGN, I'll play devil's advocate here. There will have been an editor looking over the review, and while they've dropped one hell of a clangor here in not noticing the plagiarism, you'd be forgiven as an editor of one, if not the biggest review site out there, for assuming that one of your writers won't go and copy the work from another source. For me, the blame lies totally with the writer, and there is absolutely no getting around what they've done. If we will, again, play devil's advocate, and cut some huge slack to Philip Mewson, it could be argued this is a one-off offence. You know, maybe slap them on the wrist for making a mistake, albeit a mistake that just so happens to totally steal someone else's work. Maybe if we take this Gandhi-esque leap of forgiveness, we can let Philip off the hook for this one. If, of course, this was the only time they'd pulled this, and... Oh dear. Now, this isn't quite as obvious a copy as the earlier example, but I've copied it in the links to this, and indeed all the videos featured below. See, Philip, that's how crediting works. In this instance, it's Chris Scullion writing for Nintendo Life who has been plagiarised. And once again, the effort to cover up the plagiarism is laughably lazy. So with all this fallout, it's pretty clear that a response is required. Perhaps an apology, or an acknowledgement of wrongdoings here. And indeed, Philip has posted a video in response to the allegations. With your hand caught in the cookie jar before the entirety of games media, how does Mr. Munson respond? Well, naturally, he denies the whole thing. Now this viewer is what really pissed in my chips. The word apologise is used with some regularity without any admission or legitimate remorse shown. It's quite impressive actually, almost political. If you can write like that, it makes you wonder why he copies other people. Now I'm going to be dissecting this video like that proverbial toad that it is, but before I go any further, people have apparently made a point to make threats and have involved family members. To you guys, fuck off. Philip doesn't evidence this, and we really have no reason to believe him, but honestly, this is the internet, I wouldn't be surprised. But seriously, you're not helping anyone by outing yourself as a dickhead and being violent. Get angry, yes, but focus that energy into a constructive and eloquent manner. In light of that, fuck this video. Now incidentally, after my initial write-up, Philip has, somewhat understandably, removed this video. As a matter of fact, has removed all evidence of it from other people's video. Clearly he realises he may have made something of a mistake. As such, it's been quite hard to find clips, but rest assured the quotes I am lifting are as accurate as possible, and where I can, I've provided footage string together from other videos whose links will be in the description. Let's start with the defense, if we can call it that. It My review process isn't really that different from other reviewers that I've met while working as a professional in the games media industry. The formula stays the same for whatever product I'm reviewing. I do as much research as I can about it, whether it's a game, a product, or an event, I try to look at all resources that I have available to me is that what happened with the Dead Cells review was not at all intentional. It's not intentional. Total coincidence, actually. Now, people share opinions. 
They even share anecdotes or points. They don't, however, share entire structures, paragraphs, and 90% of the script. When talking about Boomstick, our man Philip states the following. For Boomstick, I have nothing but the best wishes for him. I have nothing but best wishes for you. Okay. So you have nothing but best wishes for someone whose work you've stolen and monetized. Fuck me, I'd hate to see what he does to people he doesn't like. Let's pretend for a second that this was a total coincidence. I mean, seriously, try to suspend your disbelief for a moment. In that case, what's being said here is, I have nothing but respect for you, but your allegation is total bullshit and I'm not even going to properly acknowledge it. Oh, and on that subject, I was a YouTuber, I know what it's like. Do you? You know what it's like to have your work copied and profited on without acknowledgement or even citation, and then see it blanketly denied by the guilty party. If you get the work that goes into even a basic video, the monetary and time sacrifices you have to make, with the very real risk of going nowhere, why would you even consider ripping someone off in the same boat who hasn't got the pull of an IGN writer? He then makes the point of bringing up the second allegation, which was first brought to light by Kotaku's Jason Schreier. Keep looking, Kotaku, and, and please let me know if you find anything. Which, by the way, their, their news editor, Jason Schreier, tried to imply that my FIFA 18 review was also inauthentic by claiming that I copied it from Nintendo Life, and that's that's just so not the case. I mean, maybe he was implying that if you have similarly opinionated reviews, then you're just plagiarizing, or maybe he's just trying to get as many clicks off of my name right now as- It's not unheard of to lash out when cornered, and the contempt-fueled delivery of the word Kotaku smacks of a man with an axe to grind. Now, Kotaku isn't the most popular publication. I don't mind them at all, personally, but I'm well aware that even the mention of the firm can set off primal rage to many. It's no accident that the article, as opposed to, you know, the person whose work you actually copied, has been name-dropped here. It's a nice, easy way to discredit it by linking it to a divisive subject. Serious allegation? Well, it is Kotaku, so take that with a pinch of salt, am I right? Regarding trying to get clicks, like him or loathe him, Schreier is one of the biggest journalists in the industry. I don't think he needs to bank on YouTube feuds for stories. Also, hang on, did I hear that right? I was the editorial lead on it, so if anything, that makes it my responsibility. I was chief editor? Fuck me, no wonder no one called him out if he's allowed to decide himself whether his own work has been copied or not. So earlier, when I said that there would have been an editor looking over it, I was wrong. He was actually looking after his own work. I apologise for making that mistake. That's what apologising is. See, Philip, you should watch this video, you might learn a lot. There's one more little nugget of wisdom that has really got me thinking in this video. It's more than likely just an innocuous point, but like a limpet, it's burrowed into my head and I can't stop thinking about it. Let's see if you can get where I'm coming from. My review process isn't really that different from other reviewers that I've met while working as a professional in the games media industry. The formula stays the same for whatever product I'm reviewing. I do as much research as I can about it, whether it's a game, a product, or an event. I try to look at all resources that I have available to me. Philip says, we share our research and preparation. Now a few things. I get that he's trying to imply that if writers have similar techniques, it's likely that they share end products. Okay, a stretch, but fine. But then the facts are about research. What do you mean? Surely you should just play the game, build your own opinion, and then fact check a few things. To me, by research, this seems to imply that he's looking for other opinions to form his own. That's not how you do reviews, pal. Just a disclaimer. I know I'm putting two and two together and getting five, but it's apparent that Philip genuinely thinks he's done nothing wrong. So, is this kind of thing considered standard practice? Are you just the guy that got caught? I know that this is a long shot, but even the possibility is pretty troubling. Let's put down the tinfoil hat and talk about what we do know. Philip has been sacked for perceived <coughs> <coughs> fucking blatant <coughs> plagiarism, and I for one am totally behind that call. Whether or not this is an isolated incident is irrelevant, he needs to be made an example of. Games media is an intensely competitive industry, and anyone that thinks that plagiarising a smaller outfit is even remotely okay needs a serious wake-up call. IGN, Dead Cells and Boomstick have all been hurt by this, and now Philip can surely have absolutely no credibility. This video does seem like character assassination. And believe me, I have no interest in singling out people, and don't want to seem like a bully. But this is absolutely inexcusable.
I know there are people out there will be in defense of Philip. I mean, there are people out there that want Infowars back. But put your enjoyment of their content to one side and think about what this really means. Aside from being very illegal, this is totally immoral, malicious and exploitative. Oh, and just one more thing before we close up. Again, after the initial write-up, seriously, this has been an absolute nightmare to keep up to speed on. Jason Schreier has picked up Philip's gauntlet and looked through some more of his reviews. Again, he believes there is evidence of plagiarism here. Again, not as clear-cut as a Dead Cells review, but by the looks of it, it seems like he started off subtle and has since become more blazing in his content theft. We've almost definitely not heard the end of this, and believe me when I say that I sincerely wish that I was wrong, and this is indeed unintentional. But as it stands, games media has fallen into disrepute once again, and a simple non-apology isn't going to cut it. There are my thoughts on the Dead Cells IGN controversy. Let me know what you think in the comments, or just wildly shout obscenities, whatever's your preference. I've been Jay Ban, and I hope to see you in the next one.